there's a few different things you can do to improve your bench press. Okay? You can adjust your grip, you can change your wrist position. There's all kinds of little things, little nuances here and there that are going to get you 1 or 2% difference in your overall power. Okay, but let's look at the big picture here. Let's look at your overall training. Let's look at how you actually time your sets and time your reps. And let's get you a good solid plan to improve your bench. Okay, so I'm gonna give you five surefire ways to get more power and more overall strength when it comes down to the bench press. And ultimately, get a better chest, I guess you could say. All right, so the first one that I wanna talk about is explosivity and being very specific with how you time your actual tempo. Okay, the tempo of the movement, how fast you move the bar up or how fast you move the bar down, how long you stay at the bottom of the movement, etc. So there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Sports Medicine. Took a look at 20 test subjects that were all resistance trained. Okay, so they were somewhat experienced lifters and divided them into two groups randomly. It divided them into a fixed power output group and a self-selected power output group. And what that means is part of the group actually had a set tempo. Okay, they had to move at about 80 to 100% of their overall max speed while bench pressing, while the other group was able to select the speed at which they benched. Both groups were benching 85% of their one repetition max. They did this for three weeks. Okay, and what they found at the end of the study was the group that had a prescribed speed did a lot better. They ended up having over 10% of an increase in their overall strength. So a 10% increase in strength simply by being more explosive. Okay, so they were saying that if a group was able to just determine their speed naturally and just kind of say, okay, I'm gonna bench this fast or this slow, they ended up getting 10% less strength gain in three weeks than those that were told, hey, you need to move that bar pretty fast. Okay, now mind you, the eccentric contraction when you're on the way down is normally where you get muscle growth, okay? But when we're looking for power, it's different. We're looking for explosivity, okay? With that explosivity is going to come power. With power comes strength with strength is ultimately going to come mass later on. And we'll talk about that when we talk about step two here, or tip number two. So let me show you what this kind of means, okay? So at the bottom of a movement, we have what's called the amortization phase. And physics tell us that at the bottom of a movement, energy dissipates, okay? So it looks like this. Here's our eccentric phase on the way down. Down, 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 down. Here's the amortization phase, in between down and up, and up, okay? So concentric phase, eccentric phase, concentric phase, okay? So what it is, at the bottom of the movement, this amortization phase, we lose power, it dissipates, okay? So we want to keep that quick, okay? So we actually want to power through, we want to be more like this, boom, 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 okay? So if we work in a way where we are constantly trying to improve our speed, we will get more power and explosivity. Okay, that's what we have to remember. Explosiveness will give us the overall strength and the power. And this study proved it, 10% in three weeks. So focus on moving fast, okay? Not all the time and make sure you don't get hurt. Okay, use a weight that's reasonable. Now you might be wondering how long, like how fast exactly should you go? Well, there's a study that was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning that found that tempos with both fast eccentric and fast concentric in low amortization periods had the most power increase. So what that means is it's not just about exploding up. You actually want to explode down too if you can control it. And we're talking about a one second eccentric and a one se second, uh, excuse me, concentric. Okay, so we want one, 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 one. Okay, don't need to like, violently explode it to the point where you're going to get yourself hurt, but that's ultimately where we want to go with that. All right, leads me in to the next way, number two, proper periodization. People look at periodization in all the wrong ways generally. They'll look at it over the course of like a month. They'll say, I'm going to do a month of strength training, and then I'm going to do a month of power training. Then they'll look at that other month and they'll say, okay, I want to do more hypertrophy work, more muscle growth work. Okay, so studies have now shown that breaking your periodization more into a weekly setup is going to allow you to get a lot more in the way of strength and power and ultimately muscle mass as well. So the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research published a study on this as well. Okay, they found that test subjects that broke up their power, their strength, and their hypertrophy work into one week periodizations had better results because it all had to do with the frequency of training. Okay, so essentially, by doing small amounts of each kind of work each week, they were getting better results. So in other words, they would do probably their full body. They'd probably do bench, squat, deadlift, shoulder press, big full compound movements, 
one day focusing on hypertrophy work, muscle growth work, like more slow eccentric contractions, one day working on power, explosivity, just that rebound effect, and another day working purely on strength, going for maximal load. Okay? By hitting each of those just one time per week, rather than focusing only on a power area of your life, then only on a strength area of your life, it just worked a lot better. Basically, when you bring in the frequency of training variables, your body has more time to recover, but it also has more opportunities to actively work in that area. Hitting power and strength once per week, every week, is going to be better than hitting it every single day for a month because you're gonna to have to rotate body parts, you're not gonna be recovered, and you're just ultimately not going to get the right kind of conditioning or the training variables that you need to have a well-rounded physique and get the power that you want, okay? So that's just easy, just hit all your variables. Okay, the next one is the overload principle, okay, but doing it right. Okay, overloading a muscle is not easy to do because you end up getting hurt. So what I wanna show you is a way that you can overload a muscle and, I don't know, get a little bit more safety and honestly get a little bit more of the actual effect you want on the right target muscles. So normally you could overload and you could have a spotter with you, right, where you put extra weight on and maybe that spotter helps you with the eccentric contraction on the way down. So normally like overloading, you'd be doing something like this. <clears throat> So I might have a spotter with me that allows me to go nice and slow and do an overload. Okay, boom, bring it up, and then they'd have me do that overload. That works very, very well, not only for, whoops, that works very, very well, not only for building strength and for building muscle, but also for building power. Now, I've got a little something I want to show you too. Those of you who've seen my videos, so I talk about uh, Mark Bell. Mark Bell's a good friend of mine, Mark Bell and Chris Bell. They both, um, remember the movie Bigger, Faster, Stronger? Yeah, they, that was them. So they know all about that. This thing's called a slingshot. Probably see them all over Instagram. People think that this is just a power lifter tool. It's not that at all. I mean, it is that. Let's see if I can fit it over my, my arms here. They have various sizes, but I like to have it fit a little bit snug anyway so that it's not gonna slide off. So this is cool. So this allows me to get that overall overload that I need. So the nice thing is like the slingshot lets you carry about 10 to 15% more weight than you normally would. And it helps you stabilize, but it also helps you activate the right muscles. So one thing I like about this, it takes the triceps a little bit less out of the picture. So it makes it so that you're not having to use your triceps to push. You're using more of the shoulders and the chest, ideally the chest as it brings it in. So let me show you how this works a little bit. I might hit my microphone for a second. So nothing's really changing. Except now, I can overload. And look at how much more power I have with this 225. Boom. Boom. I mean, it's a whole new world. So you might be sitting there going, well, isn't that cheating because you have something, a device on you? If I was going for competition, like next to someone that was raw and wasn't using this, then yeah, that would be cheating. But what this is doing, it's allowing me to get adapted to a heavier weight. So my muscles now develop the stability and they have the ability to handle a heavier weight. So now when I go use any kind of bench press or any kind of chest movement without this on, I'm actually stronger. It allowed the proper activation of the chest. It took muscles that shouldn't be in the equation out of the equation. So any way that you can overload, okay, whether you use a slingshot or a training partner, overloading is going to be a great way to build power and ultimately build strength, and of course, build the chest that you wanna build. Uh, if you guys are interested, because Mark Bell's a friend, there's a link down below in the description so you can check out the slingshot. Uh, you probably saw my video before where I talked about his hip circle, so they have the same kind of thing for squats. Helps you just align, keep the hips aligned. So these things are awesome. I have a couple of different sizes there. I use you know, the yellow ones a little bit bigger. Depends on the weight that I'm doing and what I'm working on. But anyway, definitely want to check them out down in the description below after you finish watching this video. All right, so I've got another tip for you too. This one is going to be about something not to do. And it's, sometimes it's inadvertent. Okay, so how many times before someone bench presses do you see them do this? It's like subconscious, right? They just sit there, they stretch, they do this. Oh, you see the old guys all around the, the bench press in the gym in the morning, there's five of them on a Monday morning, they're all getting ready to do their bench press. They're all sitting there going like, well, hey, Jared, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, 
you know, all the honey-do lists that had all this stuff to do, you know. Oh, and then they're sitting there doing this. They're always stretching. Okay, and then they go and they do their set. And then they get done with their set and they stretch again. It's just, it's like this passive habit that people do. Static stretching will kill your strength. Do it after your workout. Do not do it before. Okay, significant reductions in strength. In fact, there was even a study that was published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sport that found static stretching prior to any kind of resistance training reduced strength by 5.5%. That's a lot. 5.5% strength loss just by stretching. Why? Because it comes back to the whole tip number one. We're losing the explosivity. Okay, the muscle fibers are getting stretched. We're losing the recoil. We're losing the rebound. We want some of that rebound. That rebound does help us, and it's a natural thing. We're not always going to be in a gym when we're using our strength, so we might as well apply what naturally exists. Our muscles naturally recoil. Let's take advantage of that and get stronger. So don't stretch until afterwards. Afterwards, do all kinds of stretching. Here's a quick tip on size. After you're done with your bench press, do a static hold where you take a couple of dumbbells and you hold them out sort of like this. And what that's going to do is those rapid big stretches actually boost IGF receptors at the satellite level. So it means IGF receptors become a little bit more open to IGF and growth hormone after a workout if you do a big static stretch. But you have to do that static stretch weighted and you do it after you've already done your strength work. Do not do it before. <laughs> Lastly, last little tip that people forget all the time. This is a simple one. Bench dips are very, very important. Okay, so what I might do is, in this case, all right, so here's what I'll grab. I'll grab this. Bench dips. So simple, but it's one little motion at the end that's gonna train your triceps to be able to handle that top portion of a bench press. Top portion of the bench press uses, of course, the chest, but it's that tricep activation at the end that a lot of people don't have that gets them into trouble. So do some kind of bench dip, put a weight on yourself, make it a little harder, but you come down, and then at the top, I want you to thrust your hips up and lean back. So you get a tight contraction on the triceps compared to this, compared to this. Okay, so dip and thrust. Dip and lean back and thrust. It's all tricep activation. Dip. Lean and thrust. Dip, lean and thrust. See, really easy. That is going to help that last little push at the end. Makes a very big difference in terms of getting that overall, just a little bit of power that you need. So with these five tips, you're gonna be able to restructure your training. Okay, hit your power, hit your explosivity, and hit your overall hypertrophy work every week. Okay, and hit full body so you can hit each body part or each power move with each given training variable. It makes a big difference. And again, with the overload principle or any kind of overweight principle, use some tools that'll help you out. Use a spotter if you've got one and do some eccentric work. Use a slingshot if you can get one. I mean, it's a couple bucks and honestly, it's totally worth it because it changes your workouts. Or honestly, just don't be afraid to go a little bit heavier, but take on the risk of getting injured if you don't have the right stability or anything to support you with that. So anyhow, if you like these kinds of videos and you like doing I don't know, workout instructional type stuff with me, please put it down below in the comment section. I'm happy to help you guys out with this, but usually there hasn't been a huge demand. So if there is a demand, let me know about it. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.